Hey guys, it's Pam from Dream Come True Farm and Shepherd's Talk. Um, you, you know, Virginia and I at Shepherd's Talk, we love to spin textured yarns. Um, I mean, we enjoy all yarns, but our main focus is on textured yarns, trying to te keep some of the integrity of the sheep into our yarn. You know, to see a tiny lock poking out, to see the crimp. Um, today I thought I'd show you um, how I... Uh, card for a textured yarn. Um, these are simple little bats. These are uh, bats of fin and you can see that they're not smooth at all. There's lots of texture left in them. You know, little locks um, and so on and so forth um, to keep the integrity and to show exactly what the sheep looked like before um, she was shorn. Now this is from my fin. And um, this is it spun up. You can see all the texture. Um, I, I mean, I love it this way. I like to see it's soft. I like to see the texture. I like to see the little curls. You can see some of these little curls left. There's some puffs that I like. Um, I think it just adds interest to the yarn. So um, I use, when I card like that, I um, use the Wild Carter. The Ashford Wild Carter. The teeth are very wide, so I'm not going to um, be able really. To, well, you could, but it helps you to card a textured bat, um, not a completely smooth bat. So basically, I do what I call a rough card. I just put the fiber in. This fiber has been washed. Rosie was uh, quite dirty this year. Over the summer, she uh, wasn't covered because I, you know, I don't want to cover them during the summer because it's uh, much too hot for them. So I let her completely be a sheep <laughs> and not have any cover on. And I think she loved it, but she got so dirty between her lanolin and the dirt sticking to it. So I had to give her a good washing. And um, this is what I got. So... What I do is I just take small handfuls, I cart it through, I let the big bumps go in, I'm not worried about smoothness, see these big puffs and bumps. Now. To fit more on the drum carter, I use this soft, it, it's a scrub brush, but it's not a really stiff one because I don't want to hurt the carter. Um, this is just my technique and what I use. So I kind of comb this in a bit. It does a little bit more than the brush on the um, carter does. So I'll go around, I'll pack it in a little bit, and then we'll stick more. Of the fiber I'm not opening it up I'm not doing anything to it because you know I want it to keep its fun texture and I'll continue to do this until I fill the Carter teeth up you know when you think you can't get any more on but again don't be real concerned with smoothing it out See how it's all, if I go slow, you can see all this left on it. Now, I'm going to just pack it in a little bit. Any big spots. See, I can just leave these and just pack them in as well. I don't have to run the brush over it to take out, um, you know, that crimp that may have gone in with the lock. I'll run it over this one a little bit. Okay, I think I can get a little bit more in on the edges, so you know I'll, I'll run it in on the side. Just trying to fill in the edges, you know, to get the biggest bath that I can. Uh, this is a smaller carter. You know, you may have one at home. Um, as long as it's uh, not a fine tooth carter, because a fine tooth carter will tend to take all of the um, character out of the uh, 
fiber and make a smooth bat, which is fine too. I mean, if that's, you know, if you want to spin a smooth yarn, of course, that's what you need your carter to do. Um, I also do this when I'm in the mood with the hand cards because I can just roughly one, two, three, and then roll them off and whatever comes off is what I use. Now we're going to take it off and see what it looks like. All right, now you can see all that texture still left in it. And what I'll do is just spin from this end, or you know, either end, and um, get a nice textured yarn with lots of the characteristics left uh, in this sheep. You can see it here. Now I'm this particular one I'm going to ply with silk thread and when I'm through with that I'll photograph it and um, have that available for you to see just how exactly this came out. So that's my technique for spinning um, you know bats with texture. So an art bat would be definitely um, considered um, a textured bat and uh, that's how I would spin it. Now um, stay tuned I'm going to do a colored bat and I'll build it with different colors um, for the next segment what I'm going to do now is um, build an art bat with different colors uh, the previous one we did with all the same colors and what I'm doing now is I'm going to use this basket it's full of stuff different uh, rovings and um, locks and different colors we're gonna make like a uh, I don't know, a seascape maybe. Um, we're with the color blues, so we'll we'll build from there. Okay, these are, it's great to hang on to all scraps because they're wonderful for building bats. So what I want to do is, um, I, I think it will be maybe a, I'm looking at the colors, maybe a stormy seascape we can um, try to build. Okay. So I'm going to start with, <clears throat> obviously, blues. I have some blues and grays here um, that I'll start to put through. Some even sand color, some dark tan, possibly, for the sand. Um, we don't want to just put through roving because we want some texture all the way through the bat, not just in the middle of the bat. So I'll start by putting these colors through, and this will be part of our sand, part of our sky, part of our water. And again, I let it go through roughly, take it slow, I don't want to tear the fiber. So we let it go in. Now I'm going to use my brush that I used in the previous one, it's just a a scrub brush does not hurt your tines on your carter, your teeth. So now I think um, some more blues. There's a little bit of purple in here. Put a little bit of that through. And um, I do think definitely this is going to be a stormy sky. Now I want to get it a little even over here. Um, I think we need some texture, so we're going to put some locks in. Carve those in. Just let, let them go in. Don't try to stretch them out or pick them out, because that's going to give you your nice art yarn texture. Um, let's see, what other goodies do we have here? Oh, here's a little bit of... Um, bit of purple a little bit of purple I think would look good some some more gray gray locks there's tiny 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 bit of um, Angeline that is in there which I mean it'll just be maybe a double take in the yarn it won't be full of Angeline put 
the lock through as well. Just build your, build it up as you uh, go along. Look at what you think it needs. Maybe just a little bit of, a little break in the sky. Maybe a little brightness somewhere over in the horizon. So we'll put that through. This is how you would build when you look at a picture. This is how you would uh, be inspired by a picture and build that back. Um, I do like that idea of maybe a little bit of break in the sky. So I'm just going to put a little bit of white in over here to add to that break in the sky. Yeah. A little bit of more blues and grays and turquoise. Some more texture. Have a nice purple lock here going to go through. Again, you see I'm not using my brush much on this because uh, I we are using some roving so we are getting some smooth spots. Um, let's do a little bit of sand, a little bit more sand looking. Now it just all represents maybe a memory um, or a picture that you're looking at. Represent a memory of a vacation, a beach that you're on, a stormy beach sky. Now this I think would look really pretty in it, just to give it a little bit of splash, right? So we'll put that through. And again, don't Take the texture out. Don't smooth it out. And remember, as you're layering it up, you definitely want to put texture through the whole thing. Don't sandwich your texture in the middle. Don't start with a smooth um, initial carding because then when you add your texture and if you end it with a smooth carding, you're just going to have texture in the middle sandwiched in. So we want texture throughout the whole thing. So I think maybe this might be... The last, yeah, it's getting filled. Pack it in gent a little bit. Let's see, I might need, you know, this is what you do. You just look and you decide what you need. I think I need a little more blue and gray in there for that stormy sky. <clears throat> Another little trick is you can go from the top here, see how it's grabbing, and card right in exactly where you might want to put those pieces. Yeah, this is going to be a pretty bad. Add a little bit over here. You know, build it, create it. Don't just shove it through. Look at it. Decide, decide what you want. I hope it's not taking too long for you, but I, I really want you to see how I do it. You know, I, I do take my time. Take a little bit over here. This is the finishing touch on the top here. Because you know when you spin from a bat, you tend to go back and forth. So we're going to be able to control a little bit of what colors go where. Okay, I think that's about it. See, it looks nice and full. Yeah, it feels full there. So let's take it off and see if it looks like a stormy beach sky. Whoa, it's really, I really packed this one. I love that. When you do that, you can go half of it, just pull off half at a time. Much easier. I tend to always want to go fight with it. Okay, so, here we go. I'm going to grab down here and get it all to come off. You know, I don't want to just peel it off because... Okay, I think I'm liking it. The sand, the stormy sky... And don't forget we have a lot in between 
sandwiched in between. And um, I, I think it definitely could resemble a storm sky. But don't forget to sandwich your texture all the way through. Put as many layers on as you can. And um, have fun with it. Just build it. Create it as you go along. And there's my little bat. It probably weighs a little more than two ounces. This um, particular carter does two ounce bats or a little bit more if you really pack it on. Um, it's only the, you know, it's a narrow, narrower width than some. But it does the trick. So here's my stormy beach sky.